27, Angana Sutta, or Knowledge of Beginnings, taken from The Long Discourses of the Buddha, a translation of the Nikhaya, Dikha Nikhaya by Maurice Walsh. Thus have I heard. Once the Lord was staying at Savati at the mansion of Megara's mother in the East Park. And at that time, Vasenta and Baravada were living among the monks, hoping to become monks themselves. And in the evening, the Lord rose from his secluded meditation and came out of the mansion and started walking up and down in its shade. Vasanta noticed this and he said to Bharavaja, Friend Bharavaja, the Lord has come out and is walking up and down. Let us approach him. We might be fortunate enough to hear a talk on Dharma from the Lord himself. Yes, indeed, said Bharavaja. So they went up to the Lord, saluted him and fell into step with him. Then the Lord said to Vasenta, Vasenta, you too are Brahmins, born and bred, and you have gone forth from the household life into homelessness from Brahmin families. Do not the Brahmins reveal and abuse you? Indeed, Lord, the Brahmins do reveal and abuse us. They don't hold back with their usual flood of reproaches. Well, Vasanta, what kind of reproaches do they fling at you? Lord, what the Brahmins say is this. The Brahmin caste is the highest caste. Other castes are base. The Brahmin caste is fair. Other castes are dark and Brahmins are purified. Non-Brahmins are not. The Brahmins are true children of Brahma born from his mouth, born of Brahma, created by Brahma, heirs of Brahma. And you, you have deserted the highest class and gone over to the base class of shoveling, petty aesthetics, servants, dark fellows born of Brahma's foot. It's not right, it's not proper for you to mix with such people. That is the way the Brahmins abuse us, Lord. Then, Vasenta, the Brahmins have forgotten their ancient tradition when they say that because we can see Brahmin women, the wives of Brahmins who menstruate and become pregnant, have babies and give suck. And yet, these womb-born Brahmins talk about being born from Brahma's mouth. These Brahmins misrepresent Brahma, tell lies and earn much this demerit. There are Vasanta, these four castes, the Khatiyas, the Brahmins, the merchants, and the artisans. And sometimes a Khatiya takes life, takes what is not given, commits sexual misconduct, tells lies, indulges in slander, harsh speech, or idle chatter, is grasping, malicious, or of wrong views. Thus, such things as are immoral and considered so blameworthy and considered so to be avoided and considered so ways unbefitting and Aryan and considered so back with black result and blamed by the wise are sometimes to be found among the Katiyas and the same applies to Brahmins, merchants and artisans. Sometimes too, a Katiya refrains from taking life is not grasping, malicious, or of wrong views. Thus, such things as are moral and considered so, blameless and considered so, to be followed and considered so, ways befitting an Aryan and considered so, bright and with bright results and praised by the wise, are sometimes to be found among the Katiyas and likewise among Brahmins, merchants, and artisans. Now, since both dark and bright qualities which are blamed and praised by the wise are scattered indiscriminately among the four castes, the wise do not recognize the claim about the Brahmin caste being the highest. Why is that? Because for Santa, anyone from the four castes who becomes a monk, an arahat, who has destroyed the corruptions, 
who has lived a life done what had to be done, laid down the burden, reached the highest goal, destroyed the factor of becoming and become emancipated through super knowledge. He is proclaimed supreme by virtue of Dharma and not of non-Dharma. Dharma is the best thing for people in this life and the next as well. This illustration will make clear to you how Dharma is best in this world and in the next. King Pasanadi of Kosola knows the ascetic Gotama has gone forth from the neighboring clan of the Shakyans. Now the Shakyans are vassals of the king of Kosala. They offered him humble service and salute him, rise and do him homage and pay him fitting service. And just as the Sakyans offer the king humble service, so likewise does king offer humble service to the Takata. Thinking if the ascetic Gotama is well born, I am ill born. If the ascetic Gotama is strong, I am weak. If the ascetic Gotama is pleasant to look at, I am ill-flavored. If the ascetic Gotama is influential, I am of little influence. Now it is because of honoring the Dharma, making much of the Dharma, esteeming the Dharma, doing reverence homage to the Dharma, that King Pasadadi does humble service to Takata and pays him fitting service. Dharma is the best thing for people in this life and the next as well. Pasanta, all of you, though of different birth, name, clan and family, who have gone forth from the household life into homelessness, if you are asked who you are, should reply, We are aesthetics, followers of the Sakyan. He whose faith in the Tathagata is settled, rooted, established, solid, unshakable by any ascetic or Brahmin, any Deva or Mara or Brahma or anyone in the world can truly say, I am a true son of the Blessed Lord, born of his mouth, born of Dharma, created by Dharma, an heir of Dharma. Why is that? Because Vasanta, this designates the Takata, the body of the Dharma, that is the body of the Brahma, or become Dharma, that is become Brahma. There comes a time, Vasanta, when sooner or later, after a long period, this world contracts. At the time of contraction, beings are mostly born in the Abhasana Brahma world, and there they dwell, mind made feedings on delight, self luminous moving through the air, glorious, and they stay like that for a very long time. But sooner or later, after a long period, this world begins to expand again. At a time of expansion, the beings from the Ahasara Brahma world, having passed away from there, are mostly reborn in this world. Here they dwell mind-made, feeding on delight, self-luminous, moving through the air, glorious, and they stay like that for a very long time. At that period, Vasanta, there was just one mass of water, and all was darkness, blinding darkness. Neither moon nor sun appeared. No constellations or stars appeared. Night and day were not distinguished, nor months and fortnights, no years or seasons, and no male and female beings being reckoned just as beings. And sooner or later, after a very long period of time, severy earth spread itself over the waters where those beings were. It looked just like the skin that forms itself over hot milk as it cools. It was endowed with color, smell, and taste. It was the color of fine ghee or butter, and it was very sweet, like pure wild honey. Then some being of a greedy nature said, I say, what can this be? And tasted the savory earth on its finger. In so doing, it became taken with the flavor, and craving arose in it. Then other beings taking their cue from that one also tasted the stuff with their fingers. They too were taken with the flavor, and craving arose in them. So they set to with their hands, breaking off pieces of the stuff in order to eat it. And the result of this was that their self-luminance disappeared. 
and as a result of the disappearance of their self-luminance, the moon and sun appeared. Night and day were distinguished. Months and fourth nights appeared, and the year and its seasons. To that extent, the world revolved. Re evolved. And those beings continued for a very long time, feasting on this savory earth, feeding on it, and being nourished by it. And as they did so, their bodies become coarser, and a difference in looks developed among them. Some beings became good looking, others ugly. And the good looking ones despised the others, saying, We are better looking than they are. And because they became arrogant and conceited about their looks, the savory earth disappeared. At this, they came together and lamented, crying, Oh, that flavor! Oh, that flavor! And so nowadays, when people say, Oh, that flavor! when they get something nice, they are repeating an ancient saying without realizing it. And then, when the savory earth had disappeared, a fungus cropped up in the manner of a mushroom. It was of a good color, smell, and taste. It was the color of fine ghee or butter, and it was very sweet, like pure wild honey. And those beings sat to and ate the fungus, and this lasted for a very long time. And as they continued to feed on the fungus, so their bodies became coarser still and the difference in their looks increased still more and the good looking ones despised the others and because they became arrogant and conceited about their looks the sweet fungus disappeared next creepers appeared shooting up like bamboo and they too were very sweet like pure wild honey and those being set to and fed on those creepers and as they did so, their bodies became even coarser, and the difference in their looks increased still more. And they became still more arrogant, and so the creepers disappeared too. At this, they came together and lamented, crying, Alas, our creepers gone! What have we lost? And so now today, when people on being asked why they are upset, say, Oh, what have we lost? They are repeating an ancient saying without realizing it. And then, after the creepers had disappeared, rice appeared in open spaces, free from powder and from husk, fragrant and clean grained. And what they had taken in the evening for supper had grown again and was ripe in the morning. And what they had taken in the morning for breakfast was ripe again by evening with no sign of reaping, and for those being set to and fed on this rice, and this lasted for a very long time. And as they did so, their bodies became coarser still, and the difference in their looks became even greater, and the females developed female sex organs, and the male developed male organs, and the female became excessively preoccupied with men, and men with women. Owing to this excessive preoccupation with each other, passion was arose, and their bodies burned with lust. And later, because of this burning, they indulged in sexual activity. But those who saw them indulging threw dust ashes or cow dung at them, crying, Die, you filthy beast! How can one being do such things to another? Just as today in some districts, when a daughter-in-law is let out, some people throw dirt at her, some ashes and some cow dung, without realizing that they are repeating an ancient observance. What was considered bad form in those days is now considered good form. And those beings who in those days indulged in the sex were not allowed into a village or town for one or two months. Accordingly, those who indulge for an excessively long period in such immoral practices began to build themselves dwellings so as to indulge under cover. Now it occurred to one of the, those beings who were inclined to laziness. Well now, why should I be bothered to gather rice in the evening for supper and in the morning for breakfast? 
Why shouldn't I gather at, it all at once for both meals? And he did so. Then again, then another one came to him and said, Come on, let's go rice gathering. No need, my friend. I've gathered enough for both meals. Then the other followed his example, gathered enough rice for two days at a time, saying that should be about enough. Then another being came and said to the second one, Come on, let's go rice gathering. No need, my friend. I've gathered enough for two days. However, when those beings made a store of rice and leaf on that, husk powder and husk began to envelop the grain. And where it was reaped, it did not grow again. The cut place showed, and the rice grew in separate clusters. And then those beings came together lamenting, Wicked ways have become rife among us. At first we were mind made, feeding on delight. All events repeated down to the latest development, each fresh change being said to be due to wicked and unwholesome ways. And the rice grows in separate clusters. So now let us divide up the rice into fields with boundaries. And so they did. Then Vasanta, one greedy natured being, while watching over his own plot, took another plot. It was not given to him. Enjoy the fruits of it. So they seized hold of him and said, You've done a wicked thing, taking another's plot like that. Don't ever do such a thing again. I won't, he said. But he did the same thing, a second and a third time. Again, he was seized and rebooked. And some hit him with their fists, some with stones and some with sticks. And in this way, the Santa, taking what was not given and censuring and lying and punishment, took their origin. Then those beings came together and lamented the arising of these evil things among them, taking what was not given, censuring and lying and punishment. And they thought, suppose we were to appoint a certain being who would show anger where anger was due, censor those who deserve it and banish those who deserve banishment. And in return, we will grant him a share of the rice. So they went to the one among them who was the handsomest, the best looking, the most pleasant and capable and asked him to do this for them in return for a share of rice and he agreed. The people's choice is the meaning of Maha Samata, which is the first regular title to be introduced. Lord of the Fields is the meaning of Katia the second such title, and he gladdens others with Dharma, is the meaning of Raja, and the third title to be introduced. This, then, Basanta, is the origin of the class of Katiyas, in accordance with the ancient titles that were introduced for them. They originated among these very same beings like ourselves, no different and in accordance with Dharma, not otherwise. Dhammas, the best thing for people in this life and the next as well. Then some of these beings thought, evil things have appeared among beings such as taking what is not given, censuring, lying, punishment and banishment. We ought to put aside evil and unwholesome things. And they did so. They put aside evil and unwholesome things. Is the meaning of Brahmin which is the first regular title to be introduced for such people. They made leaf huts in the forest places and meditated in them, with the smoking fire gone out, with pestle cast aside, gathering arms for, the, for their evening and morning meals. They went away to a village, town or a royal city to seek their food, and then they returned to their leaf huts to meditate. People saw this and noted how they meditate. They meditate is the meaning of Jayaka, which is a second regular title to be introduced. However, some of those beings not being able to meditate in leaf huts settled around towns and villages and compiled books. People saw them doing this and not meditating. Now, these do not meditate is the meaning of Ajihayaka, which is the third regular title to be introduced. At that time, it was regarded as a low destination, but now it is the higher. 
This then, Basanta, is the origin of the class of Brahmins in accordance with the ancient titles that were introduced for them. Their origin was from among these very same beings, like themselves, no different and in accordance with Dharma, not otherwise. Dharma is the best thing for people in this life and the next as well. And then, Basanta, some of the beings having paired off, adopted various traits, and this various is the meaning of Vesa, which came to be the regular title for such people. This then is the origin of the class of Vesas in accordance with the ancient titles that were introduced for them. Their origin was from among these very same beings. And then Vasanta, the those beings that remain went in for hunting. They are beings who live by the chase, and that is the meaning of Sudha which came to be the regular title for such people. This then is the origin for the, of the class of Sudhas in accordance with ancient titles that were introduced for them. Their origin was from among these very same beings. And then the Santa, it came about that some Kayita, dissatisfied with his own Dharma, went forth from a household life into a homelessness thinking, I will become an ascetic and a brah being did likewise. A Vesta did likewise, and so did a Sudha. And from these four classes, the class of ascetics came into existence. Their origin was from among these very same beings, like themselves, no different and in accordance with the Dharma, not otherwise. Dharma is the best thing for people in this life and the next as well. And Vasanta, a Kataya who has led a bad life in body, speech and thought, and who has wrong view will in consequence of such wrong views and deeds at the breaking up of the body after death be reborn in a state of loss and ill fate the downfall the hell state so too will a brahmin a vesa or sutta likewise a katiya who has led a good life in body speech and thought and who has a right view will in consequence of such right view and deeds at the breaking up of the body after death, be reborn in a good destiny in a heaven state. So too will a Brahmin, a Vesa or a Sutta. And a Katiya who has performed deeds of both kinds in body, speech and thought, and whose view is mixed will in consequence of such mixed views and deeds at the breaking up of the body after death, experience both pleasure and pain so too were Brahmin, Avesta or Sutta. And a Katiya who is restrained in body, speech and thought, and who has developed the seven requisites of enlightenment, will attain to Parabhina and in this very life, so too were Brahmin, Avesta or Sutta. And Vasanta, whoever of these four castes as a monk becomes an Arahant, who has destroyed the corruptions, done what had to be done, laid down the burden, attained to the highest goal, completely destroyed the factor of becoming and became liberated by the highest insight, he is declared to be the chief among them in accordance with Dharma and not otherwise. Dharma is the best thing for people in this life and the next as well. Vasanta, it was Brahma Sanakumara who spoke this verse. The Katiyas best among those who value clan he with knowledge and conduct is best of gods and men. This verse was rightly sung, not wrongly rightly spoken, not wrongly connected with prophet, not unconnected. I too say, Vasanta, the Katiyas best among those who value clan. He with knowledge and conduct is best of gods and men. Thus the Lord spoke, and Vasanta and Baravaja were delighted and rejoiced at his words.